Welcome back to Say You Really Want to Learn Latin and today we are making our first steps into book two of the course. So we finished book one and now we make our first steps into book two. As with book one there is an answer book should you need help with the answers. Good idea uh, to have the answers because then as you go through the exercises in the book uh, you can check the answers as you go, and if you've got something wrong, um, either there's a typo in the book, in which case send me a message, um, or, I hope more likely, you may have just got something a little bit wrong and you need to see what it was you did. Uh, okay, quite a good little system. Uh, it's been working for years, so with any luck, it'll work for you. Okay, now we are going to um, begin the first chapter of book two, with a look at third declension adjectives. Now, these shouldn't cause you any trouble, really, uh, because, um, first of all, a, a quick recap on adjectives. As you know, adjectives agree with the noun they describe in number, case and gender. And we did a lot of work with bonus and adjectives that go like bonus, and remember that if your noun is, for example, accusative singular and it's, let's say, feminine, your adjective must be accusative and singular and feminine. And so far, making the adjective agree with the noun has involved you just knowing your bonus type endings. So, anus for masculine, mensa for feminine and bellum for neuter. And, and if you remember, we just had this little issue that it sometimes rhymes with the noun, but sometimes does not. And it typically does not rhyme if you are making an, a bonus type adjective agree with a third declension noun. That's the most obvious time in which it won't rhyme. So you get things like um, regem bonum. Yeah. Well, now we're going to go one stage further and look at third declension adjectives. And as you probably would expect, third declension adjectives take their endings from the nouns you've learned of the third declension. And the first one we're going to look at is ingains, which means huge. Okay, it's a long e. Uh, and just a little thing to note is, when a Latin vowel is followed by either N, S or N, F, that vowel will always be long, okay? So, in gains, not in gains, in gains, and it means huge. Okay, now, when you learn an adjective like in gains, you need to know... Uh, two things about it. One, what does it mean? Okay, in games means huge. And the other thing you need to know is what is the stem that you're going to use with it. So when you see an adjective like in games written down, you will see in games, in gentis equals huge. So it's a little bit like with a noun where you give the nominative singular and then the genitive singular, which will give you the stem. Uh, with adjectives like in games, you see the nominative masculine singular form, in games, and then in gentis is in fact the genitive masculine singular. And that's all you need to know that when it starts changing, the stem will be in gent. Okay, everything apart from the is. Okay, now with that information, you can run down the masculine and it'll be going like rakes, he says. So, it's going to go ingens, ingens, ingentem, ingentis, ingenti, ah! And then it goes ingenti, not ingente. Okay, so the first little trick we're learning with third declension adjectives is the ablative singular ends in the letter I, not the letter E. And that little trick of the ablative singular ending in an I, 
not an E, was found with the noun cuvele. Okay, so the non-increasing neuter third declension nouns like cuvele, they, if you remember, in the ablative singular go cubili. Well, third declension adjectives, all of them, the ablative singular ends in the letter I. So, uh, in games in the masculine is going in games, in games, in gentem, in gentis, in genti, in genti. Okay? And then in the plural, it's going to go like non increasing masculine nouns in the plural, uh, sort of like kiwis. So, in gentes, in gentes, in gentes, in gentium. Ingentibus, ingentibus. Okay? That's the masculine. That's also the feminine. The masculine and the feminine are exactly the same. Okay? And then the neuter behaves, probably as you might expect from what we've just said, exactly like cubile. In other words, like a non-increasing neuter third declension noun. So the neuter of ingames is in games, in games, in games, right? The same, the same, the same. Ingentis, ingenti, ingenti. Ingentia, ingentia, ingentia. Ingentium, ingentibus, ingentibus. Okay? Now, a lot of third declension adjectives in Latin go like in games. So they are, they are following that form, and when you first see them, you know that you need the genitive singular form to get that stem. I should give an example of another one that behaves like that. Audarks, audarkis, means bold. We get the word audacious. Okay, so with that information, audarks, audarkis equals bold, you know it's an adjective, um, you know it's going to have a stem of audark, right? Everything in audark is apart from the is. So the masculine will be going audarks, audarks, audarkem, audarkis, audarki, audarki, plural, audarkes, 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 audarkium, audarkibus, audarkibus. Okay, so that's going exactly like kiwis. The feminine will do exactly that. Audarks, audarks, audarkem, audarkis, audarki, audarki, audarkes, 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 audarkium, audarkibus, audarkibus. And the neuter will go audarks, 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 and then audarkis, audarki, audarki. And in the plural, audarkia, 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 audarkium, audarkibus, audarkibus. Okay? So, third declension adjectives that go like in games behave like that. And making them agree with the noun is exactly as it has always been. You just get the noun first, put the noun in the case and the number that it needs to be in, so let's say genitive plural, or masculine singular, or feminine dative, whatever it is. And then the adjective goes into that case and gender and number. But if it's a third declension adjective, like in games, the endings for it are what we've just described. Okay? So you might have a sentence such as, I've got one here, Etruski autem, castra. Ingentia, propeflumen, para werunt. So the Etruscans prepared a huge camp. So castra ingentia. Castra, you remember, is always found in the plural. So that word castra is accusative plural, and it means the camp. Literally, it means the tents. Okay, but it's the camp. And then someone has got the word in games and they've made it agree with castra. Accusative, neuter, plural, ingentia. And then proper flumen near the river.
or, or you might have something like militem gladio ingenti interfecit. Okay, verb first, interfecit. Third person singular, perfect tense of interficio. So, is there a noun in the nominative singular? No, there isn't. So, he has killed, interfecit. Back to the start to find the object, militem, the soldier, he has killed, the soldier. Gladio ingenti. Now, gladio is ablative singular with a sword, and it's not any old sword, it's gladio ingenti. Ablative singular masculine with a huge sword. Okay? Okay, so that's how third declension adjectives work. However, you will notice that I keep saying adjectives like in games rather than just saying third declension adjectives. And that's because there are actually three different types of third declension adjective. The first type is, is the one we've just done, in games. But by far the most common are ones which go like tristis. Now, tristis means sad, and when you see this in the vocabulary, you'll see tristis, triste, equals sad. Now, what's going on there? Tristis is said to be a two-termination third declension adjective. And that's because in the nominative singular, there are two different endings that are used. There's tristis, which is used for the masculine and the feminine, and there's triste, which is used for the neuter. Okay, now, third declension adjectives like tristis behave like kiwis, okay, non-increasing third declension nouns. So in the masculine, it's going tristis, tristis, tristem, tristis, tristi, tristi, okay, that funny ablative singular again. And then plural, tristes, 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 tristium, tristibus, tristibus. Okay, exactly the same in the feminine. Tristis, tristis, tristem, tristis, tristis, tristi, tristes, 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 tristium, tristibus, tristibus. And in the neuter, now you're kind of wanting to know, well, what, what ending to use in the neuter? Well, they told you that at the beginning by going tristis, triste. So the neuter goes triste, triste, triste. Tristis, tristi, tristi. Tristia, 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 tristium, tristibus, tristibus. Okay? So when I said that tristis behaves pretty much exactly like um, kiwis, it, it kind of does apart from that ablative singular, uh, where it's, it's putting the I as it would have done if it had been a neuter noun like kubila. Okay? Now, the vast majority of third declension adjectives go like tristis. And so when you see them in the vocabulary, they are always written with a, a form that ends in is and then a form that ends in the letter e. So fortis, forte, means brave. Difficilis, difficile, means difficult. Facilis, facile, means easy. We get the word facile. Brevis, brewe, means short or brief. We get the word brevity. Okay? Those adjectives, and hundreds like them, go like tristis. Okay? So, you know, a little word of advice. If I was saying learn a third declension adjective, I wouldn't learn in games, really, because not very many adjectives go like in games. Loads and loads and loads go like tristis. So really, that is the key third declension adjective to be aware of. You just need to know that some do something a little bit different like in games. Okay? And just so that you've got the whole story, there is a third type of adjective, which is called a three-termination third declension adjective. 
And these are ones that go like arcare. Arcare means keen. And when you see this one in the vocabulary, it's written arcare, arcris, arcre. Blimey. Equals keen. Arcare, arcris, arcre equals keen. Now, what that means is in the nominative singular, there are three different starting points. The masculine begins arcare. The feminine begins our Chris, and the neuter begins our Cre. You can see the stem in there because it's A C R. So the masculine is going our care, our care, our creme, our Chris, our Cree, our Cree. The feminine is beginning our Chris, our Chris, our creme, our Chris, our Cree, our Cree, and the neuter our Cre, our Cre, our Cre, our Chris. Cree, our Cree. And then in the plural, our crace, our crace, our crace, our crium, our cribus, our cribus. And in the neuter, our crea, our crea, our crea, our crium, our cribus, our cribus. Okay, not very many adjectives go like our care. I can think of keller, kelleris, kellere, which means swift. Uh, so masculine, keller, keller, kellerem, kelleris, kellerie, kellerie. Feminine, kelleris, kelleris, kellerem, kelleris, kellerie, kellerie. And neuter, kellere, 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 kelleris, kellerie, kellerie. Okay. And in the plural, kelleris, 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 kellerium, kelleribus, kelleribus. For the masculine and feminine. And kelleria, 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 kellerium, kelleribus, kelleribus. For the neuter. Okay, so third declension adjectives. Great way to kick off book two, I think. You know, straight into the deep end, no mucking about. Um, third declension adjectives are very common and normally they go like Tristis. You will see lots of them. Now that we've started, we're going to open the floodgates. Uh, but the same rules apply. They agree with their noun in number, case, and gender. And there's loads of practice in the book. Uh, exercise 1.6 on page 9 gives you quite a lot to get your teeth into. Um, but I hope that's all right. Any problems at all, just drop me a note in the comment box below. And look forward to guiding you through our journey through book two over the next 20-odd uh, sessions. See you next time.